Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and guess what? This is the first time that you are recording me, I shouldn't say you, you are watching me being recorded from not my iPhone. <laughs> this is my new Sony A6600, which I just got for my birthday, and I am so stoked to have so much camera sitting in front of me. This is nuts. Um, so, if you notice me looking at the camera in weird ways right now, uh, this is the first time I'm using it, I'm figuring it out. But I also have an unboxing to do. I've actually had this sitting in the pouch for two days now. I feel really bad, but I didn't want to film it on my iPhone when I knew the camera was coming. And then it was my birthday, and then I went on a big hike yesterday, and I've just kind of been taking a little bit of time to not be filming. So I've got a lot of stuff to shoot, but this is the first time I'm shooting on it. So anyway, this pouch just came from my buddy Kyle, DTOM Knives and Gear talked about him several times on here. I've borrowed some knives from him. I've lent some knives to him. I've sold a knife to him. He is an awesome dude. So I'm going to link to his YouTube down in the bio. I'll link to his Instagram as well. He's trying to grow over there. He's new to Instagram, so be patient with him, not fully understanding how it all works. Um, but he's a super nice guy. I'm really glad to be able to call him a friend at this point. And he sent this to me to check it out because it's a knife that he did a video of recently and I mentioned I'd always been meaning to check one out and then he's such a good friend that he was like, here's your tracking number. So this is here for me to get a look at. So, shall we? And here we have a cold steel box. You've probably noticed I haven't done a ton of cold steel videos, but I've I've done a couple now. I've got a code 4 I actually need to do my full review on in the next day or two. And I grew up on Cold Steel. I, I've liked the brand for a long time. They're not really like one of my favorite brands at this point. But this model has been probably the most intriguing one that they have made, in my opinion, in the last couple of years. This is the 8015, which is an Andrew Demko design, and the 8015 uses his Scorpion lock. I see a lot of people rave about the custom version of this knife, or the mid-tech, which comes from Andrew Demko directly, but this is a production version made by Cold Steel, and I'm pretty sure it's S35 VN blade steel. It's got the same lock type on it. It's a really cool, different locking mechanism but also has an obscene amount of lock strength from what I've been told. So I'm excited to check this out. I've actually never even handled an 8015, either Cold Steel or Demco. So, typical Cold Steel box. Got a little bit of bubble wrap in there, keeping the knife safe. This knife is not light and it is not small. This is a, a rather large folding pocket knife, but I can see we do have S35VN. Oh, look at that focus. <laughs> This camera is going to be a game changer. You can see here we do have the Scorpion lock. This whole bar is the locking mechanism. Really, really cool. Thumb studs for deployment, and it's this G10 handle scale material, which is a really aggressive G10. It's checkered in a really rough way. So this is very, like, hard-use knife. So let's see. Okay. That's a different... Well, let's see. Also, I see everybody... I've never used this before, but I see people... Do it like that. Okay, that works. So the deployment, it instead of having a detent, I don't know if you can see the way that bar is getting pushed. So it's like using the tension of that bar as a detent from what I can tell. So I, I, I'm, I'm giving it a little wrist. Maybe I'll figure out I don't have to do that. But yeah, it kind of feels like I need to give it some wrist. Let's see if I can do it with just using the bar, actually, since that's what's... Okay, that works. So you can use the bar, and kind of like with an axis lock or a compression lock, if I separate that and pull... It's hard to see because my hand's in the way, but if I pull it, then that works. <laughs> cool. Um, the ergos on this are surprising me. This feels... This is a big knife, and big knives are risky for me because oftentimes they give me too much space to move around. But this actually feels really well molded for my extra medium hands. This is this is nice. I like it quite a bit, actually. This jimping, you can probably tell already, is not going to be something that I am behind. That is aggressive jimping, and I don't like aggressive jimping. I get it, kind of, on this knife. It feels like it somewhat suits the design philosophy of the knife. But, yeah, I, I could do without that jimping. Anywhere else that there's jimping, it's like below the level of the frames and it's not bothersome at all. This knife is centered well, 
Let's see if I can show that to you. Centering is good. Yeah, I don't I don't know how long Kyle has had this or how broken in it is, but it's it's different. I'll definitely have to get used to <clears throat> using this lock type. But I really enjoy stuff like that. With how much I like fidgeting with knives, this is gonna be a fun couple of days spending just mastering this lock if possible. And it's Spidey Flicks with the stud, that's cool. Yeah, that's not bad at all. All right, let's see how this blade is ground. It's certainly not like super thin slicey knife behind the edge, but it's not crazy thick either. We're working with a pretty thick blade stock and a flat grind. The flat grind is pretty tall. And the satin finish is actually really nice on this blade. I like the finish that we've got here, but Cold Steel Taiwan S35VN 8015 is all the, all the billboarding we get on here. I don't see anything engraved inside. These liners are pretty robust. The lock is interesting too, the way that it, like, the way it's all connected together. When I, when I give it a tug on the lock itself, I don't know if you can see the backspacer itself shifting all the way down there. That's really crazy looking, the whole thing. The, the, the lock is the backspacer and it pivots on this screw back here. Oh, crazy, yeah, it's really different, but it feels super solid in hand, and it doesn't make the spine of the handle uncomfortable at all. This feels, it doesn't feel any different from a normal knife would. If this if this didn't have this lock and had a liner lock, I wouldn't imagine the spine would be more comfortable. It's, it's not really changing the ergos for me. Weird. I love stuff like this. New locks are a great way to get me excited about a knife. And that's kind of fun to play with. I imagine I'm going to get kind of hooked on this. It doesn't It doesn't have a detent, so it doesn't deploy like a typical, like you, once you get past the wall, it rockets out. Especially because I think I'm, I'm inadvertently pressing on this bar with my hand. I wonder if I, if it's possible for me to kind of choke my hand back, take the pressure off of there. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to play with this a lot and see if I can master it. But in the meantime, it's totally functional. This thing feels like a tank in hand. This is a really beefy knife. It's nice in reverse grip. Cold Steel's, I don't know, it's like everything Cold Steel makes feels inherently tactical to me, and I think that's just the big Lynn Thompson energy behind all their knives, where for for years, like my, my adolescence, I spent growing up watching Cold Steel's like proof videos where they would just do demonstrations of how intense their knives were going to like junkyards and just stabbing them through car hoods and car doors and cutting through entire animals <laughs> like it's just crazy stuff and uh, I feel like now any time that I hold a Cold Steel I just can't help but like fantasize about using it for something that nonsensical that I would never have a reason to do but just seems fun to stab this into a car door for some reason but it would probably take it <laughs> based on how this knife feels it's really really robust and what's interesting too I'm noticing it I, I don't feel it ergonomically but like the tang let me see if I can get that to the tang right here of the the blade itself is rounded and it sticks out just a little bit proud of that cutout for the handles. There's like this little bulge there, but it's perfectly smooth. And like I said, I don't really, I don't feel it against my finger, but when I look at it, I can see it's just barely sticking out there, which is interesting. It's gotta just be, I'm sure that's not an oversight. They must have for some reason in the design, maybe it's the way it interfaces with the lock here. So it stays that, that round face. Yeah, because the whole lock slides against the stop pin. That's what's putting pressure on it. So different. <laughs> All right, well, this is really cool. Thank you again to Kyle for shooting this over. Again, I'm going to link to his Instagram and his YouTube down below. Uh, if you like the videos that I make or the pictures that I post, if you're into knives and are into my channel, then you should be subbed to him as well. He's making awesome content. He shoots a lot of cool videos and uh, he puts his own flair and his own personality into what he does and he's a super nice guy, super cool and super fun to watch and listen to. So uh, yeah, 
check him out. He's a he's become a good buddy, and it's great to have friends in this sphere who are also making content. So, this is the Cold Steel AD15. Let's see how that autofocus works. Not bad. I hope that looks as crisp for you as it does for me right now. Let me know in the comments down below how this first video is with the uh, with the new camera and how my audio levels are, etc. Let me know if there's an issue or if you like it or yeah, give me some feedback cuz I am pumped. Anyway, this has been fun. This is the Cold Steel 8015 and I feel a little bit like Lynn Thompson right now just holding it. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys for checking it out with me. There will be more to come on this. I'm going to do my typical carry it for about a week, not every day with how many knives I have right now, but I'll try to find a reason to at least do a little bit of test cutting with it a few times, have it in pocket in a few different types of pants, which I imagine this, is, this might be a little bit of a pocket shredder. But at the end of that process, I'll be coming at you guys with a full review to show you guys exactly uh, where I end up, where my thoughts end up on it, how I end up feeling about it. And you guys know how I do it by this point. So this is the Cold Steel 8015. I think I've said that like four times now, but it's new to me. This is Kyle's knife. Give him a follow. And thanks for watching. I appreciate it, guys.